There we go. Camera one. Oh, you've woken up. That's great. I'm just going to swap those cameras around for a second because that one's falling asleep. Oh, why have I got no picture? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, luckily I had two cameras set up and we're going to the backup camera and we're using the microphone on camera two. I, I hope you can hear me. If someone can let me know if you can hear me. Can you hear me now, everybody? Um. Oh, that's great. So, yes, I was going to do a pre-test, but we're eight hours early, and these are the foibles of just diving into a live broadcast. Let's jump back to the website. There we are. And um, I haven't even had a chance to look at the specs yet. You guys have probably seen more than I have. But uh, let's dive into it. I suppose if we go to... If everyone wants to go to NikonUSA.com, and then you can... Let's start with the Z6... Shall we? Let's do that and uh, and go through it. <laughs> this is completely throwing me. So uh, we'll do our very best together. And hopefully my five-year-old doesn't walk into the room. Uh, yes, clear. I'm glad you can hear me, but it's very quiet. Your audio is pretty low. Yeah, okay. Let me try and jack that up. One, two, three. Does that sound any better? Is the audio better, people? Sorry, I'm on my secondary camera because the, the Z50 is suddenly deciding not to work. So we're on the Z6. That's better. Thank you, Puppet. All right. So uh, here we are on the on the website. And, um, well, the price. We know the price of the Z6 II is two grand. How do we all feel about that? Nineteen ninety five. Is that good? That's kind of where we thought. Um, is that kind of where we all thought it would land? And then let's have a look. Let's get to the specs. All right. So dual card slots. It is addressed. I suppose we're all pretty excited about that, aren't we? We're all pretty excited about the, the dual card slots, uh, the dual processors, which they're saying for the first time in a Nikon camera. So this is pretty groundbreaking. But there's... Okay. Sorry, people. Uh, I really am sorry. This is what happens when we jump in live and not ready. Um, maybe, maybe I should, uh, I, I, I've got to dive into the settings or keep touching this camera here every minute. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway, we'll, 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 we'll stick with it. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, when it comes to AF accuracy, I'm not sure we're going to know. And I haven't had top, I haven't had time to watch the launch video. So has anyone watched that launch video yet? Which is what we were going to watch together. So this 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 whole presentation is uh, topsy turvy from from my perspective. Does anyone have any thoughts? Yeah, I, yeah. Funnily, Rob, the cam software. I cannot get the webcam software working on my machine. I think it's probably because I have way too many things installed. If you could see my desk, there's probably a conflict. Um, Anyway, what, what I might do is ask everyone just to hold tight for one minute while I change the standby mode on my Z6 so that it's infinite rather than like one minute where it is now. So everyone just pause for a second, maybe look at the specs. You can tell me some stuff. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, you can see that. You can see that while I'm playing. Not that that's going to be very exciting, but let me, uh, I'm going to have to turn this camera off. The audio will go down.
Ay, ay, ay. Okay, everybody, hopefully I am back. Can everybody hear me and see me? How are we going there? Yes, sir. Good one. Thank you, Saul. Okay. I've set it to 30 minutes. Hopefully that works and nothing else goes wrong. I will try and keep my eye on the monitor and you guys. Uh, so, yes, tell us about the video. Someone said there that they've watched the video. Um, have they? Did they talk about focus? And yes, is there still a... Oh, Mad, Mad TV, there's still a 29-minute record limit. Is that what you're telling me here? That's disappointing. So they haven't fixed that mad english tv sorry i haven't got to the specs yet can someone tell me whether they've fixed the 29 minute uh video limit because uh that's something of interest to some of us um here's the screen again anyway and i'm just going to All right, we're still there. I've just changed inputs so <laughs> so I can do this. Stick myself in the corner. Okay, so then I can have the screen and me and everything ha happening at once. Yes, so has, oh, the 29 limit remains. Okay, Mad English TV, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I did promise you I'd talk about it. I'm surprised that Nikon hasn't fixed that. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't have fixed that. So that is disappointing. Um, but we are getting 4K60 in the DX crop, which is cool, which is what they're talking about here. Um, personally, I'm okay. Personally, I'm okay with the DX crop because on a 20 mil lens, you've still got um, a 30 mil field of view. So I'm, I'm okay with that if it's a DX. They were originally talking about the 1.7, but this is a 1.5, so that's great. Uh, yeah, I, 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 and in regards to the dual card slots here, I would have loved to have seen the CF Express Type A as well as the SD. Maybe that's something we'll see in the next gen. But hey, two card slots, at least that's happened. Who's excited about that? Some people will be. Um, hi there, Maddie, And thank you. Look, thank you very much, everyone, for being here for my first ever live stream. Shamozzle so far, but I think we're going to be all right <laughs> from now on. Um, high speed shooting. Well, 14 frames a second. How does everybody feel about 14 frames a second? Is that going to be enough for people? It's certainly more than enough for me. I don't probably get above five frames a second in my shooting. Harry, what are you saying to us here? Uh, gr uh, greetings from Croatia, Alan. Thanks for being here today. Um, yeah, look, hopefully the autofocus, those two processes. Actually, let's go back to the two processes right here and see what see what they're saying to us for the first time yeah the two processes work together for faster image processing more buffer and more overall speed so interestingly they are not talking about focus there maybe they don't want to make any promises right now so that is very interesting you want yeah rob you want two slots on your z6 well you're going to have to get the z6 2 for that that's what you're going to have to do um sorry about that uh, and what are you saying, Harry? 4K crop, no built-in 10-bit, no portrait vertical tilting screen, no forward flipping screen, still 29 number limit. Uh, why is this the Z62? It has 14 frames only. And yeah. Yeah, well, it's, look, I mean, I, I myself, I went from a Nikon D3 to a D3S and from a Nikon uh, uh, four, D4 I didn't get the, the S, but the, the increments went so big. And that was originally what we thought this was going to be. Maybe the marketing department pushed the two. I don't know. But you're right. It's not a massive upgrade. Look, the two slots is a massive upgrade. Vertical grip is a massive upgrade. But they are a lot of valid things that are missing there. Um, yeah. What is the price on the Z7 II? I haven't even had a chance to see it yet. Can someone tell me what the, uh, the Z7 II is? Is that 3K US? Uh, hi, hi, official mainspring. Thanks for being here eight hours early, everybody. Well done. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyway, um, no worries, Mad English. We can talk about it some more. I mean, for for you and me, Mad English, we basically we basically want the longer limits because we both record to camera. 
And there has been times where I talk for more than 29 minutes and the camera's off and I'm still talking and I don't notice. So I'm, I'm totally with you on that one. And, um, and, and, and here's another example here. Although I think you can set it, to, set it to unlimited when it's just on standby. I just very quickly did this because I'm live to the world with giving you guys a black screen. That's, that's worse than radio with no sound. Um, sounds like they finally raised the... Uh, yep, yep. So the buffer is 3.7 times faster than the Z6 and Z7 jack. Cool. Um, so 3K, we're talking 3K for the Z7. So, yeah, look, what does anyone remember what the launch price of the, the original Z7, if it's 3K for the Z7 II, was the original price like 4K um, or, or 3.5K for the originally? Yeah, I agree, AP Studio. There is no reason for the 29-minute limit. Maybe maybe it's literally about overheating or something. Um, when I record 4 so when I do my normal videos and I do 4K uh, and I do go for 30 minutes, it does it does get hot. The, the CF cards, there's one right here, they come out of my camera and they come out of the camera hot. So, yeah, it, it maybe it is actually a recording limit for, for heat. These these are small bodies, I think. The Z6 and Z7 bodies are small. Um, anyway, let's keep going on those specs. Uh, so for, for 4K60 is great. Now, um, the only thing I saw was this. This vertical grip looks hot. What does everybody think of the vertical grip? I think it's looking mega. Thoughts, people? Um, yeah, good on you. You saw the launch as it was happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the price difference—it's about ten percent cheaper, which is which is, uh, is is helpful. So the Z7 is about ten percent cheaper, is what I'm saying there. If you're not keeping up with the comments, um, it's great to hear, Mark, that you're going to be jumping in with the Z2. Can you tell me, Mark Turif, if that's the correct pronunciation? What's the reason now? Is it the two slots that gets you? into the Z7 II. Um, what do you recommend for wedding photography? Well, I reckon we'll all have slightly different opinions, but based on my experience with wedding photography, I kind of pretty much retired from weddings somewhere between five and eight years ago because I'd done, I'd done enough. Um, I, I, I think rarely do you need more than 24 megapixels. You end up having, you can end up having thousands of files from the one day and to just be, having to deal with that massive amount of data, I would probably buy myself two Z6-2s rather than two Z7-2s. Or what you can do is have camera camera A as a Z7 for the kind of hero shots, the master shots, the setup shots, the sort of shots that's going to be put large above the uh, fireplace and then have a Z6 for the B cam to get all the sort of photojournalistic and um, spontaneous shots. That's maybe what I'd do for that person who's doing weddings. Um, well, uh, now, vertical grip. What are people thinking about the vertical grip? Well, $400 saving in the battery grip price. Yes, sure. But it looks cool. Don't you think the grip looks cool? I think it looks cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what I've read, Matty, in regards to the new vertical grip, the, the, the pins for that to work are on the inside of the camera and I, the, the, there won't be any contacts inside the Z6 and Z7 to make that work. So, no, I don't, I don't think it'll work. Um, What do you think the cameras will be up for pre-order, Matt? What do you mean there, Sergio? As in delays? Is that what you mean? Um, yeah, yeah, Harry. I love it too. It, 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 look, it's it, from this angle, we don't have the other side, but from this angle, it's very reminiscent of uh, the one with the D850 and, of course, just a, a D3456, whatever. And does it, does it look like it takes the... No, it, it, it's okay. It's taking two. We can see there it's taking two ENELC batteries and uh, it's going to give us not... To, it, it, it's, it's cool. It's interesting that they actually state that it's not going to give you two, two times the performance. It's going to give you 1.9 times the performance. So they are being very accurate there. 
Okay, more autofocus power, people. See, this is the first time I've seen this stuff. And um, what are they telling us here? Optimize for stills, high-speed sequences, and video work. The Z6S, 273 point hybrid AF system brings performance improvements, new options for eye detect AF and easier selecting of AF modes. So look, on, on paper, I suppose AF is one of the most massive things that uh, uh, Nikon have had to contend with. Clearly they're not class leading in regards to what Canon now dropped a couple of months ago uh, with the 5, the R5, and obviously what Sony has been working away at for a long time now. Uh, uh, Canon, uh, sorry, Nikon are making statements here. I'll just highlight those statements for those. They're making statements here that it brings performance improvements. Performance improvements, new options for eye detectant. So, for, look, from my perspective, they're addressing it, and I suppose until... It's in the hands of you and me. We're not really going to know how different it is. I, I genuinely feel for most use cases, I genuinely feel for the majority of use cases, there's, there's not going to be that much of a difference. And it really is only going to be for sports and birding and people who are moving, you know, wildlife and people who are moving really quickly that there may be any chance to see any difference between everybody. Anyway, I'm trying to keep, keep up with what everybody's saying here. Um, yeah, look, we do, uh, Kafala, um, we don't know what the autofocus is yet, basically. I haven't watched the video. Um, if anybody's watched the video and they talked about the autofocus and they have any impression about that, please write it in the comments. I'll try and get through as many of these as I can. Matt, do you reckon it would be worth upgrading the D850 to the Z7 II? I think uh, for that question, which was... Oh, look, I've lost it. Um, <laughs> I guess they keep moving. Uh, Paul, Paul Pan. I, I, we don't know the focus yet. So everything else-wise, I would say yes, just the focus. Uh, from my perspective, it's already a yes because I'm not a high-speed focus guy. Um, can action sports wildlife with two different car slots be a bottleneck? Well, look, they're saying the 14 frames on the Z6 II uh, again, we'll have to look at all of that uh, over time. I, I will be coming back to all of this in 24 hours' time. I'll try and do a, an updated video once some of these questions are asked. Um, yes, well, Jack, the current batteries in the current uh, battery extender are hot swappable, one in, one out. So that's kind of helpful. Maybe this will be either end as well, but I, it might not be able to be either end because that's where the buttons are, so it might not be hot swappable. Uh, yes, David, David, they did say improved eye focus. Fantastic for sharing that, David. Appreciate that. Mark, good to see that there's enough of the um, the rough edges addressed in these cameras for you in order to go ahead and look at one. Anyway, let's keep looking through these here. See in the dark. With a big leap forward in low light autofocus performance, the Z6 II can find your subject in half the available light as its predecessor. So that's great. Um, I, I already thought the Z6 was pretty good at seeing in the dark, and they're saying they've doubled that. So um, I, I can't wait to get out. I'm still in lockdown, as you know. I can't wait to get out in the dark and shoot. And might I add, some of you might have seen, um, this is just an aside. hope you don't get annoyed by this. This is just an aside for those who haven't seen the post yet. But this is my Z7 with a Mamiya medium format lens on it and an adapter. And the images coming out of it are really beautiful. Anyway. That was just an aside. And let's keep going over here. Sorry, I'll try and keep up with everyone's comments. Um, will Ibis be better? Based on what I saw before, it sounds like Ibis is much the same, but maybe it's slightly improved. Does, did anyone hear anything in the video about Ibis? Um, yeah, hot swappable from one end. That's right, Simon. Yeah. Um, good one. I like that. Original Z7 kit 4K, including the lens, radio. Okay, the batteries are hot, hot swappable. Thank you, Ride Puppet. Um, thank you, 
Nick Can. G'day David, how are you going? With the eye focus, they noted that you can lock down the location where the eye focus can take place. So if you're shooting in a crowd, ah, well, that's brilliant. That's some of the stuff that I've talked about. So you just have an area on screen, which is where you want the eye to be. That's a helpful advancement. Fantastic. G'day, Paul. Lovely to see you. I hope you're enjoying. Well, you wouldn't have started using your calendar, but it's very good to see you. Anyway, let's uh, let's have a look here. The AF system's 90% frame coverage, so nothing's changed there. We don't need to go into that. Eye detection better than ever. Well, thanks. We were just talking about that. Nikon's intelligent eye detection AF quickly identifies and locks onto eyes, either human, dogs, or cats, for properly focused portraits. I need it for my cats and my dogs, don't I? Uh, the Z6 builds on the system with accuracy enhancements and more flexibility. So look, um, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see what's happened in this space. Uh, my my expectations are, with these particular releases, it's not going to supersede what Sony or Canon are up to. But if, if, even if it gets ninety five percent of the way there, I think that's going to satiate most people. Um, again, to reiterate, it's not my use case. I'm happy with my Z6 and 7 already. Anyway, from a focus perspective. Uh, right on target. Now you can use wide area mode to set boundaries. Ah, that's what you were just talking about. Okay, so this is how you set the boundaries and where you want eyes and so on. This is a fantastic feature. I like it. It's a good update. Um, does anybody know what the cost of the vertical grip is? Because I'm excited about that. I just like the way it looks. I like it for looks. Sometimes I'll buy something just because it looks cool. Not all the time. I am known to do that. Uh, capture the eyes. So there, oh, this is the same on video. Okay, well, that's cool. So that works in video. Good to know. It's an interesting crop on. What's going on with that screen? Why is that like that on that screen? Maybe that's just the marketing department. Okay, video star. The Z6 builds a little computer, computer, the new computer, the camera, whatever. Yeah, okay. They're just talking about 4K which everybody, the 4K will be, to, just to reiterate, the 4K 60p will be DX cropped and the update is coming in February, so it's not that far off. It could be that it takes us that long to actually get our hands on these cameras. Who knows? Did Nikon talk about, they probably haven't talked about, did they talk about shipping times? Has anyone seen shipping times, whether they'll be in stores tomorrow like Apple do or, or not? Um, got going on here a 400 for the grip okay how do we feel about 400 for the grip the other one was maybe what 200 250 the old one does the four crop mean less than 24 megapixels no that's just in video kafala the four um you don't you for 4k you don't use the 24 megapixels the whole reason it's cropped i think is because they're just using the actual pixels that the 4K requires. If anybody wants to correct me in the comments, that's awesome. But no, both the Z7 and the Z6, as they stand, can shoot 4K in both full frame and in crop mode, and you still get your 4K video either way. Yeah, g'day, Blythe. I, I agree. Look, this is, this is fine from my perspective. Like, if you haven't bought a camera yet, and it's a similar price to the two-year-old ones, and you get... You're getting some of the fundamental advantages of dual slots, vertical grip, and increased, you know, increased speed across the board. I, 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 I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy within the Nico. <laughs> I'm happy within the Nikon ecosystem, but in regards to how others feel and other ecosystems, and how, how others might compare them with a Sony, a Canon, a Fuji, a Panasonic, whatever. Well, that's, that's up. We, we will see YouTube flooded with that data over the next week, won't we? Um, that's very exciting. So uh, just excuse me, everyone, just for a second. My child's at the door. Okay, 
child safely in the house. Isn't that exciting and uh, and important as well? Now, where were what were we talking about? I don't remember, but we'll just keep going. Um, keep it simple or go big. When what are we saying here? When keeping it simple, record your 4K footage in camera on a CF Express XQD or SD card. Step things up. Okay, so this is just talking about being able to record 12-bit ProRes RAW or Black Magic RAW in an Atomos Ninja. Um, and you're going to need another update if you want to go to the Black Magic. Okay, well, I, I'm not sure how many how many people out there have been using the RAW. I've always wanted to use it, but it basically came out came out just before we've been in lockdown endlessly. So I haven't I haven't done that upgrade. Has has anybody done it? Yeah, Roger. Um, we're just going to have to accept that that's what's going to happen. They they are going to be negative, and I, I don't know what to say about that. I've had a very very long conversation in my comments over the last three days with. Uh, sort of pertaining to that, that, that really there's, we can't win on that front in regards to uh, Nikon always being third fiddle in some people's minds, regardless of all of the actual Nikon advantages. But anyway, let's move on from that. Um, yeah, Harry, no worries. You'll get there when you get there. Paul, what are you saying? I've had my Z7 a little over a year, so I'm not looking for an upgrade. At yes, awesome. Anyway, let's keep looking at these specs. Slow it down. Yeah, the stability. Okay, IBIS. I think this IBIS is pretty much the same as the IBIS that we've had. It is five axis, and I don't think anything much has changed. Uh, one thing I was interested in knowing is when you do put it on a Z lens with VR like the 70 to 200 do you get more now what are they saying here when when using Nikon Z lenses based on CFA standards the value is yeah okay so they're not if Canon Canon for example has said that the they get seven stops when they have specific lenses Nikon's not making that statement so uh, that's just the way it is all right let's keep going uh, reverse focus rotation. You can change the direction. Yes. Okay. What else is going on? Multi exposures, 900 second exposures. That's that's a long time. Is that 15 minutes? I just quickly did it out in my head. I think that, that, that feels like it might be 15 minutes. Is that long enough? Does everyone think 15 minutes is long enough or would they like to actually see more? Uh, that that feels like more than enough for me. And focus shift. Okay, what's happening here? Isn't this really the same thing? Okay, so that's about focus stacking. No worries. Get connected. Look, I think we can all agree that um, being able to connect to our phones should hopefully just keep getting easier and easier. And I can only hope that they continue to make improvements on that front. There is a strong argument, and it's very pertinent today with Apple's announcements that, you know, uh, my, mobile phones, as we call them here in Australia, or cell phones, or perhaps the universal term is smartphones, um, are taking over. And I think for people who actually really enjoy the craft of photography and they actually enjoy the experience of, of creating cinema, like for me, I love the fact that when I put this up to my eye, like so... I'm basically, it's like I'm in a cinema and then I've got a screen and I'm creating something. So, so for me, that's, that's fundamental. That's the fundamental thing. And phones can never replace that because we're always, we're always holding our phone out in front of us. Where's my phone? I can't, I can't do it, but here we go. Here's another phone. We're always doing this, like this. It's not the same experience. It doesn't, it doesn't float my boat at all. So, uh, Smartphones fail for me at that point. And I I've, I've watched Apple's keynote just a few hours ago. And if you look closely at it, the image quality is, has got nothing to do with the image quality that we get from a Z6 or a Z7. So they're not there. We're talking, if you watched the keynote, you would have noted that their largest sensor ever has a 1.7 um pixel size, 
that's still far, far smaller than what we're using today. So I, I don't buy into that. Obviously, people who just used to buy compact cameras just to record whatever, they're all happy with their mobile phones and they're gone. They're already gone. They're not buying cameras anymore anyway. Anyway, that's a little bit of an aside, but it's relative to get connected. What, what camera manufacturers need to do is make it very easy for us to just, you know, our pictures just kind of just appear. I think we're at that point, but we need it to be seamless and, and for it never to fail, to never fall over. And then that, that'd be great. Um, sorry, people, I've been ignoring you a little bit. Uh, it's long enough. I don't know what that means. Call the six star five is limp state each rotation back. Yep, Soviet lens review. We don't even have the 4K60 yet. You're completely correct. Okay, it's only 8-bit yet. No worries. Well, that's um, not going to... How about, is it... Can it be more than 8-bit if connected to an Atomos, the video? Um, Let's have a look at what else is going on over here. Hi, Matt. Mark here on from Vancouver Island. Did I just see they have a sensor shift? I yeah, I'm not sure what the sensor shift is. Um, no, it's a focus shift, not sensor shift. So it's for focus stacking, I believe. I don't use that, but that's what that's for. Uh, yeah, okay, so we will get 10-bit 4K60, all right, with the Atomos Ninja, which I'm using right here to power this whole thing. I'm just going to touch my camera. I don't know where we are at that 30-minute limit, but um, it could be coming up soon. Okay, 12-bit um, with an upgrade. Okay, external 12-bit, I guess. No worries. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Formless. Um, yeah, formless. I, I thought I'd be live too at 8 a.m. your time tomorrow, but Nikon decided not to have the global launch at the same time. And it was your post on the community uh, site that made me see that it, the information was up. So I, I made an executive decision because I felt if I went live and everybody already knew that info there would be kind of no point so here we are so thanks for finding me well done um and sorry to those who do miss it tomorrow but it'll be there to watch it just won't be live anyway let's keep going um yeah mi yeah midnight at your time i know it's 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 and it was school drop off for me i wasn't even here i had to just cobble this all together in like 10 minutes um so let's keep going direct to mac that's fantastic that you can go direct to mac great one cable does it all. Yes, USB, fantastic. We know that. Um, with What are they saying here? With the universal USB Type-C sold separately, you can provide constant power to your Z6, charge your battery, stream footage, and transfer photos and videos when shooting time-lapse. So, yeah. So, look, that's cool. That's a good thing. And you can and, and we've, we, we've all always wanted constant power. So, that's another great update. Of course, that update, a similar sort of update came with the Z5. So cool. Uh, live stream like a pro. <laughs> Not today, but doing my best. And it's my first one ever, so it's a double whammy. Uh, good. What else? Jeez, this is a long page. They've got a lot of info. I'm going to be talking here forever. Um, get the Nikon experience. Every new generation of Nikon. Oh, that's marketing. Great. Oh, well, no, that's not. It's talking about the field. Yeah, so I, I made a video. Some of you would have seen it. It's something along the lines of get a grip and the fact that the ergonomics and how a camera feels and exactly how it fits in your hand is super important. I think that's something worth talking about. My use case is I can have a camera in my hand for 10, 12, 14 hours a day. How it feels in your hand is absolutely critical. And the fatigue it creates, absolutely, or not, is absolutely critical. Anyhow, moving right, right along. Uh, tough. It's tough. More clarity, less bl blackout. Oh, less blackout. Okay, let's talk about that. That's something that some people are interested in. Uh, less, if you can't see, this is what we're talking about here. Uh, 
experience the best view through the Z62's advanced viewfinder with minimal blackout between shots during high speed shooting. Okay, it looks like I've got the same viewfinder. Okay, are they? Uh, so they're just saying it's quicker. And they're not, did, it, did they talk about, did anyone, did they talk about how blackouts had been affected? Because there's no data here. It's just, um, they're just kind of talking about it. Does anyone have any words on that one? Yeah, live on Earth. Indeed, there may not be any reason for, uh, or live on Earth, uh, there may not be any re reason for upgrading to uh, uh, to it, like I was thinking about upgrading to a Z62, but now now I'm not quite so sure because it was more for me about the video. Although the the 4K60 may be enough for me because of I've got video centric needs. Um, regarding, thank you, Matthew Johnson. Regarding EV, they said better viewfinder experience. Assume that means less blackout. Sure. Yeah, I saw that, Pommy bastard. Uh, no, no offense meant, but that's your name. <laughs> Here, Digi Director already taking pre-orders in Australia. What's the price of the camera uh, camera only uh, from Digi Direct? Yeah, you like cats? No, I, I love cats. We have a cat. I just I, don't, I just don't photograph it that that often. Gino, how's your calendar? Love your work. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Formless. Min minimal blackout. Well, I think some people are going to be really excited about that. Of course, we've now got the Canon and the Sony's, some of them having no blackout. So that, 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 that won't necessarily work for everyone. DigiDirect body only 3399. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. And by Christmas time, it'll be 10%, perhaps 15% off, which will make it 28.50 in this country, which I think is a good price. How do you feel about that PB, Pommy Bastard? I don't feel comfortable saying that. You feel comfortable if you could get it sub three, or are you comfortable with thirty four? Um, yeah, yeah, I've already got the twenty four. So the Z seven crops less at sixty feet than the Z six. Um, wild games, I don't know. I hadn't picked that up, but that, that is possible just because of the amount of pixels that they're playing with. I'll have to. I'll have to. It, maybe someone else has picked that up. Has anyone else picked up the fact that the the Z seven crops? 4K 60 less than the Z6. Um, okay, it says 90. What is uh, Matthew Johnson? 93% coverage when shooting 4K 60. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting, Greg. Thank you for that. No worries. All right. Well, what else have we got here from Nikon? Blackout. We've looked at the Nikon. Make it yours. Prefer back button focus. Off and switch between picture controls. Yes, we know we can customize, which is great. There's a help button, which is great. And the Z mount lenses, which is great. Um, Maybe this is not the time for me to dive into the Z mount lenses and I've probably said it all before in other videos, but I think the Z mount 1.8 primes uh, offer terrific bang for buck based on the image quality. Yeah, I won't go into it because I've talked about it all before. And obviously the, uh, the 24 to 72.8 and the 70 to 202.8 are both extraordinary lenses. I've been really enjoying my 70 to 200 with the limited use I've had in lockdown and they're just tremendous lenses. So uh, I, th I think the, the biggest sadness for me for Nikon is that they haven't, the, the tremendous capability of the Z mount and the Z lenses has been somewhat overshadow overshadowed by one slot or lack of grip and where the real story is just the optical power of these things. So if you don't need two slots, if you don't need a vertical grip and you don't need the fastest face tracking, the story of the lenses and the optical power has been lost for some people. So that, that's my biggest sadness. So if you're thinking about going into Z and you shoot like I do, rocks, trees, buildings, streets, things that don't move, it's... I do shoot things that move, don't get me wrong, but I, I, what the point I'm trying to exaggerate here is is that 
if your use case doesn't include high moving objects, then think about the fact that this is some of the best glass probably ever made. Uh, let's keep going. And, uh, and the F to Z mount works amazingly. And as I just pointed out before, I've got all these adapters. I'm so pumped that I've got this Mamiya RB67 lens on the front of my camera. Anyway. Okay, what else have we got to look at here? I feel like I've been talking long enough. Does anybody want me to talk any longer? Uh, I've never done live before. I don't know what protocol is. I don't know what's, um, what's appropriate. Maybe if anybody's got any questions, it looks like we're at the bottom of things here anyway. Let me try and get through the last last lot of uh, comments here. Uh, yes, I agree, Gino. I detect it is now available in video mode, which it wasn't before. So that is a fantastic point. Um, uh, what else do we have here? Um, yeah, oh, look, there's no question. Uh, the Z9 is going to be a far superior upgrade, no, no question. And it, it appears that perhaps the original information from Nikon Rumors wasn't right and, and that I've now heard an updated rumor that the Z9 could be announced as soon as, as soon as February next year, which is not that far off as opposed to a year away. Who knows what's true? But if you don't need to make this upgrade right now, like if, you were, if you're a Z6 or a Z7 person and you don't need it, maybe for those people like me we can wait another three or four months if you're new to the system maybe it's time to jump in um yes brian this will be a recording this will this will be saved on my channel like everything else once i end the stream I'm not exactly sure how long it takes to get there, but I think it'll be pretty quick because this is basically being buffered onto YouTube as we speak and they're doing all their checks and balances that they do. So yes, Brian, you'll be able to see it. Um, no, uh, NC, I will not, I will, I, will, I will keep my Z6 if I get a Z6 II. Main reason being that I got a Z54 the camera for this purpose and ultimately I don't think I want to go crop sensor so my Z6 will probably become I know, I know this might seem crazy to some people but it'll become the camera for this job I plan to do more live streaming seeing as this is my first I've broken the seal it's not as scary as I first thought and so the Z6 will have this role and because look, look at this background here so that that's the Z6 uh, and a lovely, I've got the lovely, uh, what have I got in there? I've got the lovely 50mm 1.8, one of the best lenses. Oh my goodness. Uh, and the Z6 II will become my main workhorse content creation tool for YouTube and, and, and general. And the Z7 continues to be my street camera and my client work camera. That's how it'll be. I'll probably hold off getting a Z7 II and maybe wait for the Z9 because it's so close. And of course, I still have my two D850s if I require using them. But right now, I haven't done client work for three months because I've been locked in a five kilometer radius from my house. And my industry is one of the industries where we have to work from home. So it could well be that I'm in lockdown until the Z9 comes out. Who knows? <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. Um, so yes, no, I will, I will probably sell my Z50 and keep a Z6 and a Z62 to answer that question. Um, Yes, that's possible, Max. See that? I, I mean, I th look. I, I think these are solid, very solid cameras that I that I genuinely feel. Even so, there's specs on the edge around 10 bit video, and uh, we don't quite know yet the power of focus yet. Uh, but in regards to frame rates and resolutions and dynamic range and uh, IBIS and 95 to 99% of photographers' uses are going to be covered by these cameras. You've now got your two slots. You've now got your vertical grip. You've now got um, constant power if you want to plug an external battery in. So if someone was waiting to get into it and they're, they're, they don't need bleeding edge tracking, like bleeding edge, that top 1% that the Z9 might have, probably will, should. 
based on their competition. These are going to be two astonishingly great all-rounder cameras at very affordable prices from my perspective, who's been buying cameras for a long time. And my first Nikon professional camera cost me nine, nine and a half thousand Australian dollars. And these are just significantly cheaper uh, as much as... Uh... Yeah, good night, Gino. Thanks for being here. Take it easy. Yeah, I think we get a lot of bang for buck these days. And, and I, I, might, I might cause some discomfort for some, but I think we're quite spoiled. We get a lot of power. Um, no worries, NC. Thank you very much for being here. Um, formless for portraits. Do you prefer higher MP? Uh, uh, for, um, um, yeah, I understand. Um, it really depends on end use case. I think 24 megapixels is more than enough for the majority of portraiture. You just don't need it. And it, and it ends up costing you time and money and downloads and hard drives. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Wild games, twenty-four is not, unless you're going to crop a lot. Good morning. Um, so the Z eight B to the Z nine one. Yeah, perhaps that's the case, ride puppet. Perhaps that's the case. Although there's, there is thinking that the Z eight will be the sixty megapixel odd camera. So. It may well be the Z8 is more taking the place of like a D850 next step. Who knows? This is all speculation. Um, yes. Yep. Yeah, XQD is dependable. I totally agree with you on that. I don't know how to read your characters, so I will just say it's totally dependable. Thank you, Nick Can. All right, everybody. Well... Um, I suppose unless there's any more questions, these cameras are out. They've addressed a lot of things. I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing here. It, it's not blowing my mind, but that's partly because we knew most of it already. Um, that's part of the problem with rumours is that you don't get surprises. Um, I wouldn't say I'm deeply disappointed, but I wouldn't say I'm overly excited. This is just a stoic upgrade which addresses some of the tent pole issues we hear on the internet, which is dual card slots, vertical grips, and focus is going to be improved. We can't comment on that yet, really, but I do think it's going to be in the ballpark of their peers. So there we go. Any, any, uh, did you, do you know firmware? Yes, yes, that's another good one, Francis. I did read, uh, I don't know. Does, did anyone see whether the firmware is upgradable through SnapBridge as was rumored? Did anyone see that? No worries, Paul. Great to see you. Thank you, Dale. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, Dale Steele. Yeah, Roy, I, I may well, for a high-end camera, wait for the Z8 as well. No, okay. All right, well, so I don't know what happened with SnapBridge. Maybe if we go back up here, they talk about it. Uh, let's have a look. Where was it? Um, yeah, there you go. It says it there. Update the Z6's firmware with SnapBridge. So yes, the answer to the question is that SnapBridge does do what the rumours said and that you can upgrade through SnapBridge. Yes, I, look, I would like to see SnapBridge do more and be faster and just be better. I, I, I agree with that, Roy. It, it, it could ha have some money thrown at it for sure. I thank you, Ian, for answering that question. Appreciate that. Yeah, DJ, look, I'm not sure about the iPhone event. Uh, the iPhone event was more exciting. Apple are fantastic filmmakers and they are able to make a presentation that runs a shiver down your spine they use the best modern music. They cut these things together like music videos. But I knew we were having this stream tonight and I was looking very, very hard on my 5K screen at full size. I've got a high-speed broadband connection and I could see the difference between the iPhone images and the images of the presenters. And you just can't create in an iPhone with the sensors the size that they are. You just can't. Can't be done. They're doing a lot of magic. But from my perspective, that magic 
for me, has nothing to do with the process of going out and taking a photograph and the joy and the cinema and the magic. So yes, it was an exciting event, but iPhones don't replace photography for me. They don't do it. That's my personal take. We're all going to be different on that. Um, oh, I haven't seen the roadmap. No, no. Is there where where is there a new lens roadmap? Let's talk about a new lens roadmap. I thought we were all done here. Let me just uh, let me just go over there while I try and find the new lens roadmap. Do you have a do you have a link for me as to where that new lens roadmap might be? Um, rather than me wasting a lot of time here for everybody. Oh, here's the lenses. Uh, no, there's no link there. Accessories, overview, tech specs. Let's go back out. Roadmap. Yes. Is, is there one for us? A roadmap? Yeah, okay, no worries. Um, well, uh, if we can't explore that right now, that's fine. Maybe it's on Nikon Rumors. Let me jump there really quickly. I don't want to be using their content, but let's have a look because uh, they often find these things very quickly, very quickly. Sorry, there's some packing in the background. That's pretty exciting, some packing. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, Here we go, roadmap. All right, let's see what we've got here. Okay, I've found the roadmap. Oh, thanks, form formless. I can't see that link. I don't know. I don't know where it is. It's possible you can't put links in there, but thank you for posting that. Uh, where did it go? <laughs> oh, that's confusing. All right, let me just go back here. A new Nikkor 85, a 400, and a 600 were added. Okay. So yes, an 85 1.2, that's super exciting. And I mean, we're going to know a lot about that lens when the 51.2 comes out and people have talked about wanting 400s and 600s. So Nikon keep pushing forwards. There's a lot to be excited about. Um, no worries, everybody. Well, I think that's a wrap unless there's any more questions. Uh, we didn't go through the Z7, but I think a lot of it's going to be the same. Let's have a quick look here. Come on, load. There we go. It's an immersive, absolute immersive masterpiece. Oh, that's, uh, they're, they're, they're fighting words right there. It's an immersive masterpiece. More of everything. Ah, more dynamic range. That's interesting, everybody. That's really interesting. So it's the same here. That the Z7, hold on a second. Uh huh. Okay, well, it's saying there it's got more, more image quality, more dynamic range, more speed, more work, workflow enhancements. And it does say the Z7 builds upon. So that says to me, unless that's marketing triple speak, that uh, the Z7 is the Z7 II is an improvement on the Z7. Again, I'll have to watch the video. Lovely pictures, well done. And then all of this stuff is pretty similar. Uh, so they don't talk about it being a new sensor. So that's fine. Brilliant dynamic range. It's hard to say whether it's a difference from the Z7 or not at this point. Uh, there's the vertical grip, and we can see it with the buttons, yes. So there's only going to be a door at one end. Uh, more autofocus power. That's great. See in the dark. We've talked about that. It's the same amount of coverage, but the Z7 has 493 points as opposed to the 6, which is in the late 200s. We've got eye detect. That's the same. Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, everybody. Well, oh, no, 10 frames per second, three times the buffer capacity. So the buffer is three times what it was. This will shoot. Yeah, here it says here, 
it will shoot, bring the Z7 superb image quality. Sorry, I'm falling out of frame. Superb image quality, maximum definition, flexible weather report, it's correct. Uh, does not talk about crop, does it? Oh, 93% of sensor. There you go. Okay. So the Z7 is going to be better for 4K, 60 full frame. Uh, maybe I'll have to buy that one after all, because that's what I'm most interested in right here, right now. And all that stuff. Stability, that's all the same, 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 same. All right, everybody. Okay, I think that's a wrap. I've said this about five times now. Let's just have a quick look at any last questions. I don't want to overstay my welcome and bore people to death. Um, you've pre-ordered yours. Good work, Nate. The Z6. Oh, look, Z6 not living up to the hype, but I pre-ordered mine as an upgrade. Yep. Cool. Good work. I think you'll still be happy with it. I don't know. Depends what you shoot. Maybe you shoot trains. Um, no, I don't think the... Joseph, I don't think the battery grip will be compatible. Uh, offspring um, uh, prints, which are original prints, they come signed. Uh, books and calendars, I can sign them if you want me to. Just let me know. But the prints are all original, so yes, I sign them all myself and I, I print them all myself. You can watch some videos about that. Uh, yes, that's right, Gabe. Correct. Um, yeah, you guys unfortunately can't post links in here, which is... Um, oh, thanks, Formless. That's very kind of you. Um, for me, yeah, yes. It's too much, isn't it? <laughs> Um, if, if I was to get one, I would wait for their 15% uh, off Boxing Day sale, sales, which would then get the price down by uh, about $800, and then it'd be in the four and a half. Yeah, it's still, it's still a lot. I, I totally agree with you. Um, good work, Brian. Z72. What camera are you going from? It's a pleasure, Matthew Johnson. I'm, I'm, I love this community too. And it's so nice for us to be live for the first time. Hopefully I'll get better at it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You can give me a score out of <laughs> Tell me how I went because I have no idea. Um, D850, awesome. Well, I, I think it's going to be great. And what's, Brian, what do you mostly shoot? Good one, Joseph. The Z62 or the Z72? Thank you, Paul. That's very kind of you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Mega Briar Patch. I'm, I'm excited by what I see there too. Good one. Wide variety. Yeah, same as me. Bit of everything. I think it'll be a great all-rounder camera. All right, we're just about to... It's in the cart. Which one? The, the formless, the Z6 or the Z7? Which one are you doing? Thanks, Ride Puppet. Yeah, well, it's going to be a killer camera. And, and we will be talking. I just, I've just i been very, very busy, Formless. We will be talking. Don't you worry. I, uh, now this has happened, I've got a bit more brain space. Um, could you explain to me one thing? The only way to shoot 4K video is experience a dead crop mode. Ah, so Diego, what we've just found out uh, is on the Z6, yes. And on the Z7, it's only a 7% crop. And that's just to do with the pixels. Uh, they're probably pixel doubling or pixel binning on the Z7. Whereas on the Z6, they're probably doing pixel for pixel. I'll explain that another time, but um, it, do it does make sense to me. Um, is it enough to compete with? Look, uh, uh, Markman 05, is this enough? It, it, look, it all comes down to what you're looking at as to whether it can compete if all you're doing is comparing, so I've had a long debate in my comments with someone about about has has Nikon failed to market and deliver? Well, for me it was have they failed to deliver good cameras, and for them it was have they failed to market their cameras? And I, and I agree, the cameras haven't been marketed as, as well as they should have. I've, I've got no problem saying that that Nikon could have done better, and I said it in my last video that they even acknowledge themselves that they didn't really know how to market the power of the Z mount because in the beginning they had no lenses to really prove that point. They made the knocked and those people who knock Nikon for their knocked 
uh, it was an easy target when Nikon with uh, hat in hand were going, look, this is the very best we can do, isn't it? Amazing. But instead, people just ran with it and said, oh, it's a useless elephant. So it all depends on your perspective in the world. For what I do, these cameras, you know, I don't shoot birds in flight. I don't shoot the Olympics and have an Olympic sprinter running at me doing uh, a 9.6 second um, 100 meters. I'm not shooting that stuff. So these cameras are outstanding. So for me, in the real world, depending your use case, these cameras totally match and surpass. But for others, pending their use case, they, they need the specific things. They might You might specifically need 8K. Well, right now, that's a Canon R5. And you might specifically want the lowest light camera that you can possibly get, uh, which is the A7S III Sony. So you'll get that. So it's totally use case dependent. But, but this discussion is very different from the discussion that we hear from influencers, which is, you know, just comparing specs. And that's all there is to it. And then, and then you know, then Nikon often lose out on that front just simply because their Ferrari does 297 kilometers an hour instead of 305 kilometers an hour. It's not a thing for me. I don't drive at the beyond the speed limit and I don't use my camera at those crazy levels. What I'm more interested in and what where I use my camera is dynamic range, uh, in the rain, and optical brilliance, all things that Nikon are great at. Anyway, um, I don't want to go off on an unprepared rant. That would be inappropriate, I think. So... Um, Exactly, exactly the hardest. I'd love the comparing to stop. I have, I, I personally, personally think these these cameras are amazing, and they completely fit my use case. I can use all my old F glass, all my accessories. It's just so good. It's just so good. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't watched the video yet. Eight three one digital. So. Um... <laughs> Unbelievable. That was another 30 minutes and the camera the camera turned itself off after 30 minutes. That's pretty funny. Must have thought the I thought the world was over. Uh, anyway, okay everybody. Um, the group of Nikon influencers. The, what, what are you saying there, Ryan Puppet? The the A group of influencers. I might have missed something you said above. Um, Anyway, sorry, we need, sure. Yeah, agree. And look, um, I, I'm a professional who uses Nikon and it makes me money and it keeps me alive. And I genuinely have real things to say about it. I'm not even, I'm not even, an, I'm not even an influencer. I'm not even an, an anybody. I'm, I'm a working professional who decided to share what I do because I, Think, I think it's fun and I really enjoy this space and I love filmmaking and I love creating. And that's what the, that's what I think what, that's what YouTube needs more of is actually real camera users really talking about their real world experiences. So that's why I'm here. Anyway, I think you guys know that anyway. All right, we will do this again. Um, we will do this again sometime soon. Let me know any topics that you think would be good live. Uh, I thought it would be great to watch the launch video together, but Nikon has decided to do a rolling launch, which ruined my master plans. It's the way it goes. I'm going to wish everybody a very, very good night. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, my favorite lens. Yeah, I like the 20. Um, thank you, Mark, man. My favorite lens. I, I, I don't think I have one favorite lens. There is too many things that are, are great. Oh, Mario, you're here, and we're just about to wrap it all up. Um, I'm so sorry. Nikon decided to do staggered launches around the world and caught us all off guard, and suddenly the specs were up. So I decided I'd go live. You will be able to watch everything shortly. Um, yes. Thank you, Francis. All right, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, AKO. I look forward to seeing you all very soon. I'm going to wish you a good night. I'm not going to outstay my welcome. Whatever time of day it is in the world for you, a good night, a good morning, a good afternoon, 
a good day. Please, everybody, look after yourselves. Stay safe. The world is a crazy tough place and it's extra special, crazy tough at the moment. We've all got to look after each other and respect each other and and just keep creating beautiful things. And I'd love to see you out there. And I'm looking forward to making this channel bigger and wider so that we can just share more and more. I'm going to hit that end stream button. It's been a big moment. It's a bit emotional. See you, people. I don't want to tear up on live TV. That'd be bad. See ya.